Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. We're joined on the star line by a legendary comic book writer considered one of the greatest in the modern era. Their next project is their literary fiction debut, Luda. We welcome the award-winning Grant Morrison. Hi, how you doing? Absolutely great. Grant, let's go beyond the mic. You've channeled your passion into this project. It could have been a comic book, animated show, TV, any other medium. Why did telling this story this way mean more the way you told it? I kind of wanted to be right in the head of the character. You know, the the story Mm -hmm. is told from the the point of view of uh, this drag queen called Lucy LeBang. And the story is basically from her point of view. So we never see any other character's point of view. And that's what I loved about doing a novel. I couldn't really have done that in a comic because you can see the other people, you can see the situations and you know what's going down. But if you hear the story from someone, you have to rely on the fact that they telling me the truth or are they not? And the whole book is kind of based around that idea that we're living in a world where we can't tell the difference between what's fake and illusion these days. And we can't tell if she's a trustworthy narrator. We certainly don't. I mean, she even admits to the fact that she may not be a trustworthy nar- narrator, you know. So that's the whole thing. And part of the part of the story is that it's set in the world of pantomime, which is a kind of crazy theatre thing that happens in the UK for kids every every Christmas and during the summer. And so we're, we're, we're kind of in that world, seeing the world as she sees it. And so everything, like I say, everything's kind of fake and... And unreal, and we can't be sure what's true, and we just have to take her word for it. And we also have to, uh, and as they do in pantomimes, there's a big thing with audience participation where the kids shout and scream and become part of the production. <clears throat> and so, I wanted the book, the audience, the readers to be part of the story and to also have to make their own mind up as, as to what's going on. Now, your work is referenced in Stranger Things, the Boys TV series. How does yeah. that honor make you feel? Well, it's nice. It's nice to know that people were, you know, inspired by things that I did in the past. So it's always good to see them turn up. And you know, I, I, as someone who works in pop culture, it's, it's great to have left a little footprint somewhere and to see that other people are following in the footsteps. Lucy is one of the most shallow characters you've ever written. How did they evolve over the time it took to write? Well, I just had to find a kind of voice for it. And I had a few kind of inputs there that I was looking at different people from the the past. You know, I was looking at things like Oscar Wilde or Quentin Crisp, who was the kind of gay icon in the 70s in Britain. And Hunter Thompson, even, you know, from Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. So I was trying to find a particular voice that would be fun to listen to. Because if if you're stuck with this one person for the entire book... I think it's important to make the, the narration pretty colourful and exciting and wild. So it was just a, a case of finding the right voice for that character. And then once I found the voice, she kind of took over and developed herself. And, and more and more revelations came along as, as the character came to life. Grant, it's time for the Rocky Nate. Eight random questions. Answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. There is no pressure. Sure. If put in charge of the DC Universe, which character would get the next movie and why? Oh, what character would get? I think they should do a really good Superman movie for a change because I know I, I think there's been a bunch of Superman movies and he works pretty well on TV but I'd like to see a movie that was uh, that was more true to what I see as the core of the character and, and building him up to be what's basically the exemplar of what humans can be when we're at our best you know and that's what Superman is to me I think he has to be a big aspirational figure again and I'd love to see a little bit more of that so I just, I just focus on the big guy there's obviously a lot of little characters you could do that would be fun but I think if they could really, if they could really do a Superman that strikes a chord in in the heart of the world again, that would be that would be a big uh, big move forward. Where's your favorite vacation spot? Favorite vacation spot was uh, Fiji in uh, in the South Pacific. You know, I was there for a while. I just really loved that place. Beautiful beaches, uh, beautiful sunsets. That's the one for me. What did you think was stupid until you tried it? What I think was stupid until I tried it, uh, alcohol. <laughs> I didn't take a drink <laughs> until I was 30. And then I thought, yeah, I've been missing out on something for a long time. Yeah. Do you believe in ghosts? I don't necessarily believe in ghosts as being the spirits of the dead, but I certainly believe that something like ghosts exist. You know, I've seen a couple myself and I've seen things that seem to be supernatural, but I'm not a believer in the afterlife. How about your favourite colour? Favourite colour is turquoise. You know, it's, the, it's a major colour in the book as well. Grant, who's your favourite between Joe Orton... Alan Bennett and Morrissey. Joe Orton. He's just funnier and more savage. The other two are fantastic. Alan Bennett's great, but Joe Orton's just, uh, I, I love the, 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 the dark humor of Joe Orton. How about the favorite comic that you didn't write? Rogan Gosh by Peter Milligan and Brendan McCarthy, probably. Would you change anything in your development of the X Men? 
Uh, not in my version of it, no. I mean, I think, you know, the, the X-Men are one of those characters and one of those uh, sets of characters who get revamped constantly and get changed all the time. So I think it's really important for each new person who comes in to just do their own thing on it. So it's not necessarily I would change anything about, about what we did at all. Why should people read Luda and what do you want people to get out of it? I think they should read it for kind of the reasons I mentioned. We are living in a world where almost everyone is in drag. You know, we're all mediated through screens and everyone has filters and everyone's got kind of curated lives. So this book is really about that. It's about the difference between the fake and the real and how it's becoming harder and harder to tell that difference. So hopefully the book gives you a narrator who's very much aware of that and and, and allows the reader to think about how that manifests in their own world and in what ways are we all presenting you know, different versions of ourselves. Grant, what makes you happy today? What makes me happy today? Uh, just the fact that I got some sleep last night, to be honest. <laughs> and then I haven't slept for two days, so that, that was a big win last night. What are your thoughts on the Krakoan Age comics? Oh, that? Oh, I love the, the, the X-Men stuff. I actually haven't been reading it because I... I, I live in the country and I don't get to see many comics, so I only see stuff of DC, sometimes sends me a box, but I never get any Marvel comics. So all, all I know is that Jonathan Hickman's been doing a brilliant job on it and I keep reading reviews that sound great, but I haven't actually seen the, the stories. I, I'm sure it's, it's brilliant, it sounds amazing. They like to vacation in Fiji, loves Joe Orton, and has seen a ghost. Their novel is Luda. We thank the talented Grant Morrison for taking the time to talk with us today. Thanks, Sean. And now, my friends is a Beyond the Mic shortcut.